Welcome everyone and thanks for joining us for our composition cover-up. This is a top of the line or Bernina 880 class and we're going to go through the steps required to use this machine to create this little project which is a composition cover-up. And these little book covers are just my favorite things because the composition type book, notebook, you find them everywhere. They're always the same size and you can make a, a cover-up and then just you refill it all the time. So that's what we're going to go through. And our composition cover-up project involves several things that we're going to have a lot of fun with. We're going to paint part of the, of the design. We're going to do a little embroidered applique. We're going to use one of the great features of the Bernina 880 called shaping to create a little flower. We're going to use a crystal applique and we're going to use dual feed to stitch this up in the end. So it's actually a very quick project. It's a fun project. Uh, we are going to use a lot of the Design Works tools and so I will go through how to set all of that up and the steps you need to be and to use to be successful. Our project is based on, or the, the surface that you saw is Craft Text, which is a great indestructible paper fabric. And you may know this as the back of your jeans, your Levi jeans, that little craft tag on the back that gives us the sizing information, that's craft text. And so now it's available in yardage and we are having so much fun creating great projects with this. Because it has become fairly popular, it's now in colors. So black and white were added and now the chocolate and the stone. And the project that I'm working with was with the stone color, so kind of the gray. You can wash these and dry them um, before you even make your project and that distresses them just a little bit, giving them a little bit of a worn leather look rather than a smooth paper look. But you can use it right out of the package or you can wash it up to get that more distressed look. Either way, it works great. The design collection that we're using is called Mod Petals. This is a design works collection, so it is geared to giving you designs that allow you to work with your cut work tool, your paint work tool, and your crystal work tool. The designs are all coordinated and in this collection there are 50 different designs, um, working with some modern retro flowers. Most of the fat colors that you'll see are black and white and but of course we're going to change this up a little bit to make it look a little bit different. So we need to sort of get all of our pieces and parts together before we start into the main embroidery. So we're going to create our appliques first. We need to cut the fabric for our flower applique and we need to create the crystal applique. So for cutting, we're going to use our cut work tool to cut out our little flower shape. And to set the machine up for this, you want to just leave it set up for standard embroidery to begin with. So attach your cut work stitch plate, the one with the orange sticker, leave it set up for regular machine embroidery with the teardrop uh, embroidery foot number 26. We are going to leave it threaded with any color because the colors that we are stitching at this point are only basting colors and will not be part of the final design. So we'll navigate to the embroidery menu and we're going to select our personal folder which is where all of the good things are and we will select the cut work design which is the design that has the multi colors in it. Then this will come to the machine and you will need to select the needle which will engage the em embroidery arm allowing you to attach the hoop. And it will prompt you to do all of this. So the machine is its a big machine, it's a great machine, it has a lot of great features, but it really steps you through a lot of the processes that you need to use to be successful in creating and stitching out your projects. So what I have in my hoop is some hydro stick and the stabilizer that is that I have hooped is something that is stiff and that's what you want to that's the most important part of the stabilizer that you select is that it's something stiff because you're going to be cutting into it and you always get a cleaner cut. Cutting into something firm rather than something soft. So I'm using Hydro Stick. Hydro Stick comes as, as a tearaway and it also comes as a cutaway and it doesn't really matter which version you use and you could use even the um, heavyweight tearaway which is also very crispy.
And then we're going to layer our fabrics pretty side up in the hoop. And the fabrics are also backed with applique fuse and fix. This is a paper backed fusible web that when we peel away the paper uh, in the very end, we have a sticker. So we will be able to stick our applique into our project and it not it won't be moving we won't have to worry about using additional spray any time that i'm cutting any type of cut you know cut design in my, with my embroidery module i never cut one i always cut multiple colors i always cut more than one um, unit because you will find that you will use these if you have them already cut and perhaps maybe your project there's a mistake and you need a second one or you're making a, a duplicate so you need extra pieces technically you will always get a better cut if you cut with more than one layer in the hoop but let's say you you only want to cut the one you're never going to use this shape again but you need to have these extra layers in the hoop just layer in an extra piece of stabilizer to let yourself have this extra bit of um, stiffness then when the design is on screen you want to select your edit tab that's the pencil tab and you're going to use absolute check for placement you want to be sure that that flower is going to land on the fabrics that you have selected so my the little hand that's pointing to each of these tips of the flower I usually check the north the south the east and the west direction and I watch the needle move to each of these positions in with my hoop attached and then I know for sure that uh, the cut shape is going to land on my fabric. Once I'm sure that everything's in the right place, I activate my motif basting box. This is a box that stitches a basting box around just the design, not the hoop perimeter because I don't have fabric there, but just around the design. And so I'm going to stitch the basting box and I'm going to stitch the first line of the design, which is a little outline stitch. And then when the color bar shows me something like this that says cut one, I know now it's time to put the cut work tool on. So again, the machine is stepping you through the process. You follow the color bar for embroidery and for cutting a, a, an applique out in embroidery, you're also going to follow the, cut, the color bar. So I've got some red flags out to the side indicating I need to change my presser foot, I need to be sure my stitch plate is changed, and I need to make sure the blade is in the right position. So we'll remove the needle and thread, we will attach the cut work tool, we will attach the cut work foot, which is 44C, and we'll be sure that the dial in the window says part number one or cut number one. Your cut work tool comes with two blades. One you'll insert into the cut work tool and the other will be a spare for a replacement as a, or as a replacement blade. And then the little L wrench is there to help you unloosen to remove the blade and then reinsert the second blade. If you press the start button before you have told the machine that you have it set up correctly, uh, it will tell you exactly what to do. And this is great. You don't have to remember to do it, although the flags on the side of the screen help prompt you to know to do that. So we will select the presser foot selection icon, <clears throat> and the foot that it wants us to use is in the larger box with the star. So you don't have to search for it, it's already there. You just select the the image of the presser foot and it, the red flag will go away and then you need to also tell the machine that your cut work plate is on. Then you will select close and the machine will be all will believe that you have it set up correctly and now you need to be sure that the one is displayed in the little metal window of the cut work tool and you should get in the habit of checking for this because when we finish we will take take it off the machine it will probably be at position four so it is not uncommon that when you would reattach the cut work blade for your next project that it's at four and it just rotates on the little wheel so the needle has come out the cut work tool has taken its place it is put into the machine flat side to the back just like a sewing machine needle is and then tightened down with your needle changing screwdriver you will cut position one and then the machine will stop and it will display what your next cut position is which in this case is cut position two you will move the the dial of the blade until there's a two displayed in the window and you will continue on cutting until all four positions have been cut
and your shapes are now ready to be removed from the hoop. So you have your shapes cut out and we're just going to set these aside. One of the beautiful things about the cut work tool is you can cut a lot at one time, not just three or four, but you can load these up in your jumbo hoop. You can duplicate these out. Let's say that your applique project has a lot of a shape that is repeated, then you can cut many, many, many out. And the, another very nice thing is in this case, I was cutting six of these flowers in the jumbo hoop and with resequence, you're able to cut all of position one at one time, all of position two at one time, all of position three and four, so you're not having to go from flower one to flower two to flower three four different times. It's doing the whole area at one time, so that's really quite nice. So if you are in love with the cut work tool, and I think once you use it, you will be, you will probably wonder, where do I get more cut work designs? So there are some that live on your machine. They are in your design works folder, and but they're just a couple. So the other places that you can get them are from um, embroidery collections where you may see the little cut tool on the front. If you see the little cut tool on the front, then that means the cut work files are included and all you have to have is the tool. If you want to create your own, and that's easily done by selecting any design with an outline and turning that into a cut line, you would need the design work software cut work enabled. So you would get the design works software box plus the cut work code card. You would also need to get the, the tool and then you could design your own. So it's really however you want to do this is great. So you would, um, it's all modular, it's all separate. So you can get just the tool and a collection or the tool and collections or the tool and the cut work design works software. So we have the cut work component fixed. Let's work on making our crystal applique. So again, this is also from the Mod Petals Design Works collection, and your crystal work tool has four different metal plates uh, called dies that are to uh, that will enable you to create four different size holes for different size crystals. You have four different punches that also correspond to the four different plates. There is a little trash receptacle to collect all the little punch out pieces and then there is a foot that you that is involved and how the crystal work tool works is you will punch a template which you'll see that which is kind of that bluey green piece then you will fill it with crystals then you will uh, then be able to add that to your design. And so this is kind of the end result is what you see right here. So we would select our crystal temp our crystal design and then it's going to come to the screen. It's going to tell you which um, plate to load up. So this says SS6. So the plates are marked or the dies are marked SS6 as well as the little punches. They are engraved on the punch. So you would at attach each of the right pieces. The container goes into the needle hole of the stitch plate, and this will be your cut work stitch plate. And this little post will go into this little hole, and it will be held in place with a magnet that's in the container. This, um, the SS6 is already loaded into the container, and it fits matching the little grooves. Then you will attach the right piece, the right punch and then attach the foot and then for my benefit or to always make myself feel good that I've got everything lined up right, I always lower the presser foot and then rotate the hand wheel into the die to be sure that the punch is going into the die. Because the container is magnetic, it is very easy for it to jump into or attach itself to one of the openings where the feed dogs are or to the wrong hole. So this is always a good thing to check. So now we need to set our hoop up and punch our template. You're going to hoop a piece of baking parchment paper and this is something you pick up at the grocery store. With the reason that we're using baking parchment paper is because our template material is sticky and we're going to just lay it into the parchment paper so that we can remove just the template material when we're finished after it has been punched. So you will hoop your parchment paper and if you notice it's hooped backwards more so like if you were doing hand embroidery. So you lay your inner hoop down, you lay the parchment paper 
next, and then you put your outer ring down and fasten everything in place. You only need to remove the paper from the side of the hoop where it attaches to the machine. This is how the machine knows what hoop is on the machine, so remove this part here, the rest can stay outside the hoop. And then you will will remove the white backing paper from the template material and then affix the template material to your parchment paper. Smooth it into place. Again, you will use absolute check to make sure that it's going to land on the template material. And when you are making a template, you need three things. You need the template material, which you might find rolled up into a plastic um, you know, bag. Uh, you'll need some sort of backer board to mount the template material to, and then you will need the transfer film, which is what the crystals get attached to. So we're going to punch. We now then lay it to the backer board. We're going to dump the crystals on, and you can either shake the, the template and the crystals uh, will fall into the holes, and for the most part, they land in pretty side up. If they don't, you just flip them. You can use your tweezers, you can use a pen, uh, but you just flip them to get them pretty side up. Then you will lay a piece of transfer film on top of that. That is sticky, and that will make all of the crystals stick to the transfer film. And you will pull them up, uh, pull up the transfer film, and double check that the crystals come with it. If they don't, lay the film back down and make sure the crystal has good contact with the transfer film. And then you will reattach the backing paper in the end because we aren't quite ready for this. Um, these pieces are reusable, but go ahead and reattach your backer paper at this time. So there are three different types of design works tool. We've looked at the cut work tool and you've seen how we used that. You've seen the crystal work tool in action and there is also a paint work tool and those are the three design works tools. They are all available separately. They all do different things and it's a great way to add mixed media to your embroidery or any other project that you're working with. We will work with the paint work tool as we get ready to set up our design and paint onto our cover. So where do you get more crystal and paint designs? So we are using the Mod Petals Design Works collections, but there are other Design Works collections, such as the Manhattan Leaves Design Works collection, or there's Christmas collections. Again, these typically um, combine cut work designs, uh, crystal work designs, and paint work. Uh, a lot of times there's embroidery to help so that you can stitch your cut work pieces down. So you will have embroidered appliques, cut work appliques, you'll have textured layered pieces. It makes some very, very pretty elements for your projects. And again, if you wanted to create your own paint work or crystal work or cut work, all you need is the box of the design work software and then whichever code card or code cards you want. Again, it's all modular, it's all separate, you decide which elements you want. So it's a great way not to have to have everything when you only want one small piece of it. So now we have our, it's kind of like baking a cake, our flowers measured, we have our butter melted, and now we're ready to start assembling everything. So that's where we are. We have all of the elements ready to start drawing on our cover. We just need to create our design with on-screen editing. And I want to show you how this is done with the Bernina simulator. This is something that you can also download to your computer and you could um, be you know, working on the simulator when you are away from your machine. So we'll go into embroidery and I need to select my design which is on my USB stick because uh, as a design works component it comes on a USB stick so I've put that onto my, I'm sorry, it comes on a CD and now I've put that onto a USB stick and I'm going to select the design that I'm going to be working with. Your handout that, you, that accompanies this um, online class has you working with the jumbo hoop at this point and so just so that the instructions are similar I'm going to go ahead and change to the jumbo hoop. The project was stitched out in the jumbo hoop because your craft text is uh, kind of a uh, stiff and because we're going to be working with a marker I wanted the craft text to lay as flat as possible. 
Now, how we compose the design doesn't really matter which hoop we use. However, when we're working with shaping, which is a piece that we're going to add to this, the shape that you start out with is dependent upon the hoop that you have. So uh, just so that the instructions that are written for you match th this presentation, I'm just going to make a few changes. So I need to select, go to the hoops icon and I'm going to select the jumbo hoop. And I see that I have a little red flag here telling me that I'm, I, I need to work with the um, foot number 26. And I'm going to pause and, and change that later. But right now I've got my design and we're going to add something to this. So this black element in the design is all paint and we're going to add a little stitchery, a stitched greenery to go over top of this. So we're going to select the add icon, we'll navigate to the machine and we'll use the built-in motifs folder and we're going to select one of the designs from the quilting folder and these are quilting designs by Diane Gadinsky. We're going to navigate to design number 21. It's a nice big leaf. And if I look at my screen, I don't see any way that I can change the size of this. All of the creative tools are in the information menu. So when I select the eye, it gives me all the tools that I want to work with. And the first thing I need to work with is, re is changing the size. So we'll select Rescale and you will physically turn your multifunction knobs to the left until this gets to about 70%. And then you can drag and drop this just by picking this up with your fingertip or stylus and moving this more into place. I also need, or I feel like I want to rotate this. So staying within the information window, select the eye breadcrumb and select rotate. And now using either one of the knobs, I can rotate this and now I can position this so that the stitching actually aligns a little bit more with the uh, drawing part of this or the other flowers or greenery, but it also gives me a little more dimension and it gives me a little bit more greenery. The next thing we want to add is the little daisy that's going to be at the top. So we're going to add again. We're going to use the breadcrumb trail to navigate back to the set of main four folders. So we'll use the selection breadcrumb and we're going to select the stitches um, folder. So there is a copy of every one of the sewing stitches in this folder that lives in embroidery. So this is a great way for you to implement any of your sewing stitches, uh, bring them into embroidery because they're already here and you can then adjust them. So we're going to select one of our decorative stitches and one of the satin decorative stitches and I'm going to scroll until I find design number 40 which is a large petal. And I'm going to rescale this to about 90%. You could scale it now or you could scale it when the whole thing is finished. Then we're going to go back to the information menu and we're going to select shaping. You have nine different shapes to select from in shaping and the shaping design that we're looking for is the circle. And I'm going to place six of these around the circle and now I'm going to change the size of the circle until it brings those petals closer together and it looks more like a, a flower then I can drag and drop and put this into the spot where I want it to be. About 15% is about where I size this down to and when you are finished you can select the checked term. Because we're going to be stitching on craft text, I want to adjust the stitch length of this a little bit in my folder or in, on my little daisy. So when I look at my icons over here, I see that there's some at the bottom that are shaded and partial. And whenever you see that, that means there's more. So you can scroll up just like on your smartphone and then I can select the stitch properties and I'm going to turn on the stitch properties and I'm going to turn this down to about a 6.6. .6. So instead of having really large jump stitches and remember this is going to be on a, a book cover, I'm going to break these stitches down a little bit so that one I don't have so many needle penetrations all at one time in the same spot because craft text you're going to treat like leather. Uh, so I want this to be a little more broken up and then I select the check mark. Now the only 
element on the screen that the stitch properties affected was the daisy because that's the only design on screen that's highlighted. So none of the other elements on screen were affected at all. I'm going to take a look at the design and when I scroll down to the bottom layer, you'll notice that everything becomes in color. And because I've added all this other stuff, it's really not centered anymore. So I can scroll down and select Move. And with everything selected, select the center icon, and now everything moves to the center of the hoop. So now I know what center is. And we're going to save this. So we'll X out of the... Um, the information menu because we're finished there and anytime we're going to open or save or delete something we always work through our file selection menu so we'll go to our file selection and we want to save something so that's the arrow going into the folder we'll select the um, folder and now we touch the highlighted design and it saves it away so let's return back to our presentation and let's go through the rest of how to put this together and what we're going to do. So now we're going to uh, we're going to hoop a piece of stable stick stabilizer. This is a sticky um, stabilizer. So we hoop it with the paper up, and then we score the paper and we tear away the paper, and what is left behind is an adhesive surface. We're going to select a placement line. That you, that's included with this project that you can download. And this is the, the three sides of the front cover. This is going to let you know where to lay this out into the hoop. Now, yes, you can certainly stick it anywhere and you can do your placement. Um, but this is a great way to be sure that, one, what you embroider lands on the front of your cover. And if you're making more than one of these, they all end up in the same place. Now, this placement line was created in the Bernina embroidery software. And all you do to create this is select select the open embroidery or the open object tool. You make, <clears throat> you know, just that shape. You, you dot at the upper left corner, you have go to the corner, next corner, and the last point, you press enter and it stitches it in and it creates the line. You don't even have to know how big it is. You can resize the size according to the dimensions of your, your book cover just by typing that in. So if I know my book cover is uh, 11 by 16, I know that the uh, it's really going to be about 8 by 11 is the shape of this. So I type that in as my width and my height, and voila, I know exactly where to lay my book cover down. So we're going to stitch the placement line first, uh, and that's just stitched on the sticky paper. Then we'll select the folder, and we'll go get our new design. So the design that we just created, we will reselect, and that will come to the screen. And now we it comes to the center, so if your design was stitched in the center, then this should still be centered on your piece. But again, you can always use absolute check and touch the different elements of the design to double check that it's going to land where you want it to stitch on your your notebook cover. You'll touch the needle when you're ready to embroider. You want to be sure that your basting box is deactivated. If you were using the basting box because we cut earlier, sometimes your basting box will hang on. So we want to be sure that that's off. And now, we, we if you look at your color bar, it's showing you that the first thing that needs to happen is the paint pen. So that's why I didn't go to any trouble to tell the machine we were going to set up with 26. You, do, you did not do need that for the basting box, but for this design, you're going to immediately change it to the paintwork tool. If you press the start stop button, the machine is going to tell you you need to tell that you need to attach foot number 93 and you need to tell the machine you're doing this. So it, you would go to the presser foot selection, you would select foot 93 and now it's time to remove the needle and thread and then you're going to attach the appropriate sleeve into the the um, paintwork tool. There are four different sleeves and this is to correspond with different size markers that you might find or even pencils. There is a number that is etched onto the sleeve and you can see where I'm circling it and you are looking for 
sleeve number four to work with the edding markers and the edding pens come with your paintwork tool there are ten different colors and we're going to use color the green color which is I think also number four now once you've attached the sleeve you want to lower your pen guard because your pen guard is going to tell you to where to stop when you're inserting the pencil or the pen so you'll insert your pen until it touches the pen guard and then you'll attach your craft text within the placement lines on your stabilizer and then you'll smooth it into place and the sticky is going to hold everything down any time that we hoop stabilizer, we always have a corner. We always have four corners sticking outside the hoop. And you can chop off one of those corners. You have the pen has moved into the position of where it's going to start drawing. And you can lay a corner of this stable stick down. Remove the paper backing and stick it over top of the craft text. And now when you press the start, you can see if the pressure, I'm sorry, the pressure of your pen is giving you the right amount of coverage the right amount of ink is coming out onto your project. Um, once you determine that yes or no it is, uh, if it's not, adjust it. You can either you know, readjust the pen or you can use the little wheel on the side of the tool to raise it up or down so that you can make fine-tune adjustments and then you can draw a little bit more. Then when it's time to um, stitch this you will want to, you will go back in the design using the broken stitch or the stitch sequence control so you will remove the pen guard you will remove your scrap you will select the st stitch sequence control and you will turn it back until the dial until this number is at one don't pay this number is irrelevant you will be stitching it backwards until you'll be turning the dial to to the left until the you are at the start of the design and it should read one and then you will start to color so you will paint your design this is just like any color change that you would have as you are embroidering you will paint until it is finished and then before you do anything when it is finished you put your pen guard down it's going to be very um, you will want to take the hoop off, you'll want to remove the pen, but you want to be sure and wait and do that until after you put your pen guard down because you want to be sure that you don't mark your project up by accident. So the next thing is reset this for regular standard embroidery. We'll put the pen guard down, we remove the paintwork tool, uh, put the cap back on the pen, wait till it clicks because that will make sure that it's secure and your pens won't dry out. You'll reinsert your needle, uh, you'll reattach the embroidery foot and you will thread with the color that you need. Um, the machine is going to have you set the machine for the right uh, presser foot tool uh, selection you'll select foot number 26 you will put on you can leave the cut work tool on or the straight stitch foot on both will be fine and the first thing it's going to do is stitch the placement line this shape should look familiar this is the exact shape that we've cut out so we have our placement line the next thing is to peel away the paper and put our applique into place I have found through a lot of trial and error that you will have a more successful um, applique if you will score this in the middle and peel out to the edges often if you try to peel up the edges you will bring the um, stabilizer with you and then you have nothing that will hold your fabric in place so right now we have stuck the fabric into place on top matching the outlines this is a kind of easy one because the, sh the shape is all symmetrical so one petal is exactly the other petal so this is an easy one to lay down then you will complete the embroidery beginning with a tack down and then you will do um, the inside colors the little um, inside part of the flower then it will stitch the quilting design and then it will stitch the shaped little daisy and these colors are suggestions uh, of course this is your project make them the colors that you want when this part is finished it is now time to add the crystal design so you will peel away the white paper and then you're able to you, you're, you can see through the film you can see exactly where your embroidery is so you can place this exactly where you want it uh, maybe you want your crystals leaning more to the right maybe you want them leaning to the left but this is where you get to audition that and then when it comes time to fuse this down you will use a medium hot iron with no steam 
You're going to hold it in place for 10 to 12 seconds. Try not to slide the iron because most irons have steam holes on them. The crystals can get caught in those vents and then you can move them as they're heating up. You want to use parchment paper as press cloth when you're doing this. And I try not to slide the iron just because of, this, of the steam hole problem. Then you will peel up the transfer film. Go slowly. Make sure that every crystal got a good application of heat, and if it did, it is staying attached to the craft text. If not, it's coming up on your transfer film. Maybe that crystal was, was um, not on the iron, or maybe it was on a steam vent and it didn't get the heat that it needed. Lay the film back down and reapply your iron in a different position to reheat those last remaining crystals, and then pull up your transfer film. And then just let it sit a while. So, I mean, not a while, I mean, just, you know, five or so minutes, be sure that the glue sets really nice before you start on to your next step. And the last few steps that we need to do to finish this is we're going to spray the project with 505 spray and smooth this onto a lining. Then we'll trim that to match the project, the front cover of the book or the book cover. Then you're going to add your craft text flaps and you might, you probably getting the hang of this. This is not a whole lot of, uh, not a lot of sewing required because you've got a lot of things that don't fray. Hold this everything in place with some wonder clips because again this is like leather. Any pin that you use is going to leave a permanent mark. A hole in the craft text is permanent. So use your wonder clips, hold everything in place, and then you're going to prepare for sewing. You need to put in a sewing needle. You need to have the same thread top and bobbin. This could be some of the isocord that you've used in your project, or it could be a variegated thread, or it could be a matching thread that matches your craft. Text. I would wind your bobbin less than 25% because you're only going to go around the edges one time. In fact, this is a great time to use manual bobbin threading and just pr hold the power switch, the power down until you have about 10% and stop. Insert your bobbin for sewing, thread the needle, put your 9mm stitch plate on. We're going to use the edge stitch foot number 10D and you're going to plug in your foot control. You'll select the home and then you'll go into sewing and any time that you attach a foot that has a D written next to the number that is a dual feed foot, it really is not complete until you bring the dual feed mechanism down so that it rests in the back of the foot. The dual feed can only be attached when the presser foot is up and likewise it can only be detached when the presser foot is up. So presser foot is up for both of the attaching and removing of the dual feed. You can tell the machine what presser foot you're putting on and it, this is kind of nice to do this and the 9 millimeter plate because now when you select your straight stitch you can use the graphic display on screen to decide how big you want your zigzag stitch to be. We're going to guide the edge of the project to the blade. So where is the zigzag in relationship to my blade? All of these visual things help you get it right the first time without having to do a lot of trial and error. So we're going to move the zigzag to far left so that you'll use the buttons to move it over to the left and it'll say minus five. We're going to adjust the stitch width to five and a half and we're going to um, make the stitch length 2.25. This gives us an open and wide zigzag which is then going to cover the edge of the project. And this is your needle position buttons. They are underneath your multifunction knobs. Uh, I like to set my needles to stop down and you have a a button on the head frame that looks very similar to this. All that button does is move the needle to the next position. If you want to program the needle to stop down or to stop up throughout your process, then you need to tap it on the screen. And this is a great way to program the needle without causing the needle to do anything. It just programs the needle to stop up or down. So as I'm guiding the edge of my project to the blade of the foot, the zigzag is falling to the left of the blade, which is how it was pictured on screen. So I have all of my zigzag stitch on the fabric. It is wrapping off the edge just slightly. So if I look back at my stitch, you'll see how that zigzag stitch, the far right edge of it, 
goes just a little bit beyond the blade, and that is so that the stitch locked at the edges. When it comes time to do the corner, you can tap your start-stop button to hover and that will raise the presser foot just slightly enough for you to pivot and continue on. When I was doing this, and I've noticed what's fashionable now, whether it's fashion or craft projects, uh, you don't have to have a, you know, you can over sew the pivot spot. So my needle is going to stop off the edge of the fabric, I'm going to rotate my book cover, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to stitch over the corner even though there's already stitches there. That seems to be the trend in stitching projects these days, so that's what we're going to do. And you will go all the way around. I like to begin and end in an inconspicuous place, so it's usually somewhere on the back because if my book cover is on my desk, then the, the knotted area is in the back. And this is the little composition book that is so readily available, and you can find them bukus uh, as school is getting ready to start and for very good prices, and they are wonderful books to keep your sewing notes in or to record any type of uh, anything really, but you have a, can, uh, a nice cover that will last longer than maybe your note-taking uh, book does, and they, they're very easily replaced. So thank you for joining us for our composition cover-up. I hope you've learned and were inspired to use the design works tools, all three of them, the cut work tool, the crystal work tool, and the paint work tool, and I hope you'll give this project a very um, a, a nice try because these covers are really quite nice. Thanks for joining us, and happy sewing.